Good Thursday evening. This is, uh, uh, don't matter who I am, this is about uh, Uncle Lou and the new guy, Mr. Spriggs. Uh, here we go. Go ahead. This is a tinfoil hat. Uh, good morning, uh, Uncle Lou here. Uh, welcome to Tinfoil Hat Time, uh, the new radio show we got going here uh, since football season ended, uh, where no topic is off limits. Uh, I told you guys last time, uh, but we're going to cover a wide variety of topics on this show, everything from government conspiracies to uh, people who've, who've seen Bigfoot. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do some political talk. Uh, you know, we'll talk about some of these money wars that the United States is involved in. Uh, our first episode last week, we talked about the weather, uh, global warming, uh, uh, weather and climate control and manipulation, uh, where the U.S. government and the military uh, are using the, these heart machines in Alaska and chemtrails and things like that to uh, control the weather. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting show. Um, uh, as usual, uh, no subject is off limits. We'll talk about anything that you guys want to talk about. Um, so uh, if you have something you want to talk about, give us a call. Uh, we'll be glad to talk with you. Um, the focus of today's show uh, is going to be about the popo. Uh, yep, the police. Uh, so we'll spend a good amount of time today uh, getting into some topics as it relates to police in America right now, uh, some different things that are going on. Um, we have a new co-host today. Uh, I'm going to let him go ahead and introduce himself. He'll tell you a little bit about himself. Uh, but uh, go ahead, Spriggs. Hi, uh, I am Spriggs, and I'm donning my tinfoil hat for the first time uh, with Uncle Lou. Uh, first conspiracy, actually, is you've got a diehard Miami Hurricanes fan on the radio with a Georgia Bulldog fan. Wow. Mm. Uh, so that, that's a conspiracy in itself. Um, we could just talk about that for the show, but we're going to talk about <laughs> some dirty cops. We're going to talk about some issues that are going on in the U.S. right now. So, Uncle Lou, I'm going to pass it back over to you. All right. Well, before I jump into it right here, I'm, I'm going to give the same disclaimer that I give uh, on my YouTube videos every single time I talk about anything related to the uh, police. And I know there's going to be a certain segment of people that are going to hear this, declaim, this disclaimer uh, and they're not going to care. They're going to think what they want to think. That's fine. Nevertheless, I'm going to give the disclaimer. Um, Uncle Lou is not anti-police. I'm not anti-cop. I don't hate police, uh, and I don't hate cops. I have family members who are police and cops. I have, uh, you know, friends I've I've had since I was little that have grown up to be good police officers and good cops. Um, it is possible to have a problem with a certain cop or a certain policy within a police department. Uh, or certain procedures within police departments in the United States, it's possible to have problems with some of those things without being anti-cop. Uh, if you're unable to separate the notion, uh, the difference between those two, then there's little or to nothing um, Uncle Lou can do to help you. Um, a lot of people who listen to my show hate President Obama. That doesn't mean you hate the United States of America, uh, and it's no different. Um, it's, it's no different at all. Um, there are dirty cops, uh, just like there's dirty people in every single job. But like I've said before, if you run into, if you go to Walmart and you run into a cashier who's having a bad day, worst case scenario, they're going to, you know, put your milk on top of your bread and you get home and your bread is ruined. That's the worst case scenario. If you run into one of these police officers who's dirty or crooked or having a bad day, then you wind up dead in the road full of holes. That's the difference. Um, you know, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. And, and in, in the United States, we've given cops an, an enormous amount of power. Uh, I would argue that they have too much power. Uh, but, but nevertheless, we can all agree that they have some extent of power over the, the, the rest of the population. And with that power comes enormous responsibility. Um, we, as citizens, we have every right to hold uh, politicians, policemen, any government workers, we have every right to hold those people accountable, uh, to look at them under the microscope, and to judge their actions. Uh, it's our job as citizens uh, to police the police. Um, you know, somebody has to watch the people that are watching us. 
Uh, now, so with, with that sort of disclaimer out of the way, like I said, there's going to be some people who are still just going to say, well, Uncle Lou hates all police officers. If that's what you want to think, that's fine. Uh, there's nothing I can do to change your mind um, other than tell you that's just not the case. But, you know, I, I am aware that there's going to be some people who just who, who just think that from the, you know, from the from the word go. So uh, I want to start here now. We're going to talk about some specific cases that have been going on, some national that I'm sure everybody has heard about. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, some things, some specific cases that maybe you haven't heard about. Um, but I want to start off by talking about just the, the police culture in general in the United States. Um, now, I, I, I think that one of the biggest problems is just, the overall culture and attitude that is held within a lot of or most of the, the police departments in the United States and an us against them mentality. Um, police, the police departments now seem to operate with the same mentality that that military units operate with, and I, I just don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. The United States has a long history of separating its domestic police force from its military force. And the lines between these two things are starting to get blurred. Uh, you've got government programs that donate free of charge used military war equipment from Afghanistan to civilian police departments. This is happening all over the country. It's happened in Uncle Lou's town. Uh, my town has received about a dozen uh, military-grade Humvees. Uh, they received an MRAP, uh, M-R-A-P. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you, you can look a picture of, of it up on Google. Just type in MRAP. Uh, it's basically a, a cross between an armored personnel carrier and a tank. Um, now, the turrets have been removed from these MRAPs before they're donated to the police department. But, you know, you, you look out your window and you see two or three of these MRAPs rolling down your street. I, I mean, you don't know whether you're, you're in the United States of America or, or, or Tiananmen Square in China. There, there's no reason for a civilian police department to have military-grade equipment. Now, I'm all about safety for police. I think they should all have all the body armor and bulletproof vests they can get. I have no problem with that. Uh, you know, I understand that, that the police need to have a certain advantage over the criminal element. I get it. Uh, but arming a civilian police department with military equipment uh, is just a bad idea. Um, it, it's overkill. Uh, there's no need for it. And this was on full display in Ferguson, Missouri over the summer. Now, regardless of what you think about the Michael Brown case uh, and, and whether it, you know, whether it was right or wrong for Officer Darren Wilson to shoot and kill him, you know, in the middle of the road in broad daylight uh, for the crime of walking down the road. That for, whether forget about that, but just look at the aftermath of what occurred. It's not the police department's job to ramp up tension. Uh, the the police is supposed to try to de-escalate situations if at all possible. Well, this neighborhood was obviously on edge. I mean, everyone could see it. And for the police department in St. Louis and Ferguson, Missouri, to roll into downtown Ferguson with tanks, Humvees, I mean, they were shooting pepper spray, wood, they were shooting wooden blocks at people, these giant sound cannons. I mean, if you've seen any of the live video, and I'm not talking about the PG stuff they showed on the news, but go on YouTube, you know, go on some of these websites and, 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 and look up these videos that were shot on the ground there in Ferguson, Missouri. You wouldn't know if you were watching a video from Ferguson, Missouri or Fallujah, Iraq. When the police rolled in with the, their tanks, their MRAPs, their armored personnel carriers, they jump out wearing full military fatigues. Um, it's just ridiculous. And, and, and they got these things in Uncle Lou's hometown, too. And a lot of people raised a big fuss about it. And the chief of police comes out and he says, well, the only reason we need these MRAPs is in case there's an ice storm, we can haul nurses to work and stuff like this. It's the biggest bunch of crap. Um, it, it's just ridiculous. The, the, the attitude and the mentality that's taken hold of, of the police departments in the United States has just gotten out of control. 
I mean, you can just look at statistic after statistic, number of bullets fired per year, um, you know, is, is, is just one you can look at. But it's this, you know, us against them, shoot first mentality. Um, and I just think it's gotten way, way, way out of control. Uh, you know, I understand that being a police officer is a dangerous job. I also understand that it's a volunteer position. In other words, the police departments aren't drafting people. Um, you know, when, when you become a police officer, you have to accept an inherent amount of danger that goes along with the job. I mean, it's not a surprise. You know, if, you, if you're if you working at the McDonald's drive through and you get shot, that's a surprise. Uh, but, you know, when you become a police officer, you have to expect a certain amount of danger. And, and you know, how many times are we going to hear the officer feared for his life? Well, how do you judge that? Um, that that can't be a defense in and of itself. Uh, you can't shoot an unarmed person and then your only defense be, I feared for my life. Um, that, that's just a catch-all. Um, you know, they, it, it used to be they trained police, okay, whenever you're beating on somebody, make sure you're yelling, stop resisting. That way, if someone is filming you, whether the person is actually resisting or not doesn't matter. If you're yelling, stop resisting, then we the police can then argue, well, they were resisting. See, the cops were yelling, stop resisting. That's what they used to teach them. Now they teach them, no matter what happens, all you have to say is, I feared for my life. He reached for, I thought he was reaching for my gun, is another one. Uh, you hear all the time. It's just these standard lines that these cops spit out. And we'll go back to the, to the Darren Wilson, Mike Brown shooting. Now, the guy was shot dead in the road. They didn't even, Officer Wilson didn't even have to give a statement. Nothing. He went into hiding. Two months later, they hold the grand jury. Well, what do you think Officer, Officer Wilson was doing during that two-month period? He was meeting with all the police lawyers uh, and being told exactly what to say. I guarantee you Darren Wilson did not tell them what happened. They told Darren Wilson, this is what you need to say happened. And that's the problem. They have this list of built-in excuses where, okay, if if we get caught or we do something out of line, this is our fallback. He was reaching for my gun. I feared for my life. I thought if he hit me again, he would knock me out. I thought he was going to kill me. Well, you know, you're going to have to do a little bit better than that. I'm going to stop now. I have to ramble on for 10 minutes now, but I get carried away with this subject here. But what are your thoughts on the general the general attitude or, or the, just the general culture within the United States the civil police departments right now, Scrapes? Well, first thing I'm going to say, police officers should be held to a higher standard in general. Um, and why? Why you? And I've actually been reading over the the Brown case a little more. One thing is this conspiracy in itself are witnesses alone out of twelve witnesses. A third of them are saying he was charging. Another third is saying he was maybe walking forwards, jogging, or stumbling because shots were already fired. And the other third said that somehow, after already being wounded, he had his hands up trying to surrender. That's confusing in itself. That's already going to stir up a conspiracy. Well, with the issue, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, and again, this is all just my opinion. We all, we all know what an opinion can be stated as. Everybody has one. But the thing is, officers do have alternate methods of detaining a human being and a bully breed dog. They have tasers. They have pepper spray. One of the things... A police officer has to be sprayed with pepper spray before being able to carry and use pepper spray in the field. They have to be tasered before using their taser in the field. Well, they're, hired, they're handed an even deadlier weapon and are taught how to shoot it. Nine times out of ten, a police officer is not even going to know what it's like to take a bullet in the vest. And they're authorized to use deadly force, and that's their first choice to go with. A deadly force. Well, one, if your assailant is far enough away from you, 21 feet away from you, as long as you are t 21 feet away from your assailant, even if they have a knife, you're safe when you have a gun. 
if you know how to use it. That's common sense in itself. Another thing is, and I'm going to say this, slavery has always been a big issue in the United States. It always has been. And this Michael Brown case has actually brought that back up. Well, the African Americans are being targeted again. Well, people are going to think what they want to. My thing is, some of our police officers choose that line of work because of how they're treated in school, bullying. We all know bullying is actually taking it as far as the people that are being bullied committing suicide because they can't handle it. The lack of communication is a downfall of everything nowadays because society has gotten too lazy and they've forgotten how to communicate. We've forgotten how to have a simple conversation. Stop resisting, stop resisting, stop resisting. I mean, Dan, did he forget how to talk? Did he forget how to do his job? Did he feel above the law? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking y'all. Do some of our officers feel like they're above the law? Do some of our sheriffs feel like they're above the law? I mean, there's been cases. I mean, I even started a web page on Facebook called Citizens Against Police Officers. Killing our animals with no consequences. And I was going over this with Uncle Lou yesterday. He said, well, hell, it's not just the, the animals. It's human beings as well. I mean, if you have pepper spray, if you have a taser, which is known to bring your assailant down or is known to bring your target down unless they're on some sort of PCP or are or, or geeked up on some other type of drug, it's going to take them down. If it doesn't, then you can pull out your gun. Then you can shoot them, not in a center mass target, shoot them somewhere in the shoulder. Shoot. You're trained to shoot. Do your job. Your job is not judge, jury, and executioner. You're not above the law. You should be held to a higher standard. I've even read stories where police officers are chasing. They're, they're pursuing a target. Well, when they come, they go around the house, they're getting ready to go into a backyard, there's children playing, he sees a bulldog, a pit bull. So what does he do? He shoots the dog in the head in front of the kids that are in the backyard playing before he continues to chase his target. Did he face any consequences for that? No. Some of you... He feared, he feared right for now. his safety. He feared for his safety, exactly. And, and you're right. The officer was being coached. Well, well, guess what? I'm going to bring up a topic here in just a little bit that's really going to make you think how lazy society and all law forces have gotten. I'm hearing some chiming. I think we may have hit a little conspiracy topic here. I may need to tighten up my pinball hat. Hey, uh, yeah, what, what happened was uh, we did have a caller, and then they jumped right back off. So They couldn't handle the heat. It happens. Uh, well, I mean, this is opinion, Dave. If you're going to come on this show and you're going to bring your opinion, if you're going to put your opinion out there, be able to take what comes back. This is this. You, there's no keyboard warriors here. We're putting our opinions out there. I'm bringing my ammunition, which is verbiage, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I will communicate with you. You mentioned training, and, and you know, police officers have training. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a case. Uh, and, and, and this is something that's just happened in the last couple of weeks in, in Washington State, uh, Pasco, uh, Pasco, I'm not sure if it's Pasco County or Pasco City, but uh, the, the police get a call uh, in the middle of the afternoon, police get a call that there's a, uh, a deranged individual uh, standing on the corner uh, of a busy intersection in town throwing rocks at passing cars. Um, the police respond. Uh, there's the guy, obviously, you know, suffering from some sort of mental breakdown. Whatever, whatever happened, um, I don't know, and, and unfortunately, we'll never know. Uh, the police confront him. He then throws a rock at one of the police officers. A rock. Now, I understand a rock can do, you know, some amount of damage. Uh, there's about five or six cops with us around this guy at this point. He takes off running, the guy does. The cops chase him uh, around a corner, up a block. They're on a sidewalk. 
The guy stops. He turns around. The police unload on him, four or five of them. Shoot him, kill him dead, right in the road. Uh, for the crime of throwing rocks. Uh, you mentioned training. Now, forget training. Now, if there four or five police officers can't take down one man with a whose only weapon is a fist full of rocks, they can't surround this guy, tackle him to the ground, cuff him. Uh, shooting, they went from showing up to shooting for throwing rocks. I mean, this is just absolutely ridiculous. You said it. Judge, jury, and execution are right there on the spot. Uh, they they killed the guy, filled him up full of holes for throwing rocks. He had no weapon. He had no gun. He had no knife. He had a handful of rocks. Uh, you know, and, and throwing rocks is a crime. It can be dangerous. I get it. I'm not saying he, the guy was doing nothing. You know, he, he, he I'm sure he wasn't a, a a star citizen or anything like that, but that's not the point. Four or five police officers cannot subdue one individual with a handful of rocks any other way besides shooting him dead. There's a there's a big, big problem here, a big, big problem. Uh, you, you don't value human life to the point where you're able to process, okay, this guy has a handful of rocks. There's five of us here. What are our options? Shoot him. Th- that's a serious problem. One thing I'm going to say, with, with, with this case, of, I mean, I, when I was a kid, I grew up in the country in Alabama, of all places, yee-haw, mother, there we go. I threw rocks at signs as a kid. If I knew what I knew now, hell, I wouldn't throw rocks as a kid. I'd be, would I get shot for throwing rocks? And there's, there's witnesses here. There's, the officers don't care if people are around. It's <clears> show up. <throat> it's shoot. It's ask questions later. I'm sorry. Course, these officers are these officers are suspended with pay. With uh, pay. They hide them in a hole somewhere. They they won't be questioned. They're not forced to fill out any reports about what happened. Nothing. And you know the the, the police lawyers and all these people will gather these people in a room and they'll say, okay, this is what you're going to say. And and you'll see this is what'll happen. Uh, a week, six weeks, whenever it is down the road. These officers will come forward. There'll be a press conference. They'll all have the exact same story, and you'll hear one of these lines. I feared for my life. He reached in his waistband. Uh, he, he reached for my. He reached for our gun. You'll hear one of these things. Now, this is this is on video, so some of this stuff's going to be harder for the cops to lie about. Like they're not going to be able to say that the guy reached for my gun because he was running away from the police when they shot him. So they're not going to be able to say that. Um, you know, they might I mean, be able I'm to try the, I reached in my waistband thing, but, you know, but this, that's what will happen. They'll get them together. They'll all, they'll all have their same little story that they'll tell. They'll come out and, you know, if, if, if it holds the form, nothing will come of it. You know, they, they may or may not even hold a grand jury, which won't indict these people because the prosecutor is going to present the evidence in such a way where the police are guaranteed to get off, which is what happens every single time. Let me throw this question out of there, Uncle Luke. What's going to happen when one of these police officers gets killed because society as a whole is getting fed up with this crap? They're tired of putting up with it. They're tired of hearing, I was in fear for my life. So what's going to happen when a civilian shoots and kills a cop and their response is, well, I was in fear of my life. You're not holding the officers at any higher standard than a regular civilian. Actually, you're giving them and putting them at a less standard. You're not holding them to anything. You're paying them. Yeah, a badge does not a badge does not grant you extra rights. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, and and you've nailed it right on the head. It, it, they need to be held to a higher standard. And and this this us us against them mentality that the that the police departments have with their whole you know the thin blue line slogan that they like to use. You know, it, it's not it's not the police against everybody else. You know, I, I want to be on the police side, and in most cases I am. But, you know, you hear this argument all the time about the war in the Middle East against ISIS and all these Islamic terrorist groups and stuff like that. That People come out and they'll say, I realize that not all Muslims are extremists who want to kill us. But where, you know, all the, all the peaceful Muslims, they need to come out against 
ISIS. And, again, where, you know, where are all the peaceful Muslims? You never hear from them. Well, I say the same thing for the police officers. When a police officer or officers clearly are in the wrong somewhere, where are the good police officers saying, get rid of these people, put them in jail? These people need to be put in jail. They need to be prosecuted. They don't represent the rest of us. You don't see that. They circle what the wagon. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? What happened to that? In most places, in some counties in Alabama, you are guilty until proven innocent. They will put you in county jail and forget about you for a yeah. month or two, all to collect $25 a day. Wow. Power and money. Greed. We are our own worst enemy. Overthinking causes problems that are never even there. Wow, a mind is a powerful thing. Society as a whole is getting lazy. And going back to the man throwing rocks, it's, it's stated in the report. They already know. The officers were, were told, they know who this man is. He was just recently had a warrant, a writ warrant put out for him because he was not able to pay his court costs. He had an FTA out at this time. Is he a threat because he could not come up with the money to pay his court costs because he is living in a homeless shelter and right. in deep depression because he's away from his daughters? What's actually supposed to happen by law in this case, that man is not supposed to go straight to jail. That man is supposed to go to a mental facility and see a doctor who has been trained in his field to take care of this man. What is the value of human life nowadays? I know in Texas it's $250,000. We'll get to that on another topic. What is the value of human life nowadays? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and, and again, I'm, I'm going to reiterate, most cops are good people, and I, and I get it, uh, you know. But the bottom line is the, the culture and the mentality that has slowly started to take over police departments in this country, the us against them, it's, it's, a, it's a military mentality. You know, the, the, you're not in the – if you're a police officer, you're not in the military. You're not. Uh, if, you want to ride around in tanks, if you want to ride around in tanks and Humvees and MRAPs and, 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 and shoot cannons and things like that, go on down to the recruiter's office and sign on the dotted line. They will be happy to send you over to the desert. They're always looking for people to go. Um, but, you know, your job as a police officer, you know, you should not be out as a police officer looking – it just seems like some of these people that get caught up in some of this stuff are are looking for that kind of trouble. It's just, I, I just really don't get it. Um, and another you know, thing to add to that about the, the militarization of our U.S. police forces, not only that, this all started in 1997. When the Department of Defense began, the Department of Defense began distributing military, military, military weapons to our U.S. police forces after Congress adopted in legislation in 1997, authorizing the little-known 1033 program, 4.2 billion dollars in military hardware donation fuels the militarization of U.S. police forces. I mean, I, I'm sorry, are we at war? against ISIS? Are we at war against terrorists, or are we at war against ourselves? I'll go back to my earlier comment. We are our own worst enemy. Just have a conversation. One, it's rare nowadays to have an intelligent conversation with another individual, whether it be a man, a woman, a veteran. You know, and if you want to have an actual conversation with someone that's going to mean something to you, go to a nursing home. Go see one of your veterans. Thank them and just talk with them. I guarantee you it'll be one of the best conversations you've ever had in your life. You'll appreciate it. And you'll spend some time with a man that was willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice for your freedom because freedom is damn sure not free. Another thing uh, to consider with, with these police departments now is that Police departments 
have have basically become an extension of the local government's tax collection agency. Ninety uh, percent of what they do is is basically they're basically a, a, a tax agent um, c- collecting revenue uh, through through citations and things like that for victimless crimes. Uh, how many millions and millions of dollars are local municipalities, states, and the federal government making off of marijuana arrests? Jails are filled with 18 to 25 year old males who got caught with, you know, a couple of joints. Um, and they're going to sit in jail for ridiculous 30 to 60 days. Right, and it's and, and who's it affecting? People who can't afford lawyers, poor people, class warfare, you know, victimless what crimes. Was, what was the Department of Corrections actually set up for? One to detain true criminals. Yeah. Another thing it was set up for is to take people who have made mistakes, make them realize their mistake, turn them into a productive member of society. That is what they're supposed to do. In all actuality. They turn into an ongoing cycle of people going in and out of jail, generating a residual income for each county and each state. Greed, one of the seven deadly sins. Well, there's a reason it's one of the deadly sins. How many deaths does greed cause every day, every hour, every minute? Think about it for a second. Don't overthink it. Think about it for a second. Uh, It's definitely a giant money-making scheme. and, and I, I mean, tell you, you have people in jail. You've got people in county jail whose original offense was speeding. Um, wh- what happens is they get a speeding ticket, which I get it. Speeding's against the law. It's a safety concern. Fine. You give somebody a speeding ticket. The fine's two hundred bucks. Person can't can't afford it. They show up on uh, court. They can't afford to pay their two hundred bucks. What happens? Judge sentences them to a year probation. So they have the course of that year to pay off their $200 fine. Well, once you go on probation, you have to pay the probation office a $50 monthly supervision fee. So now they're having to pay $50 a month plus uh, – And if they color code you, you have to take drug tests. It's $25, if they $25 miss a payment, every time. Yeah, if they miss a payment, the probation office can have a warrant put out for their arrest. So you have people who are in jail for failure to pay a $200 parking ticket. You have other people who have gotten a $200 ticket and had to pay $1,500 to get it taken care of by the time they pay the court costs, the fine, and a year's worth of probation fees. Uh, At $50 a month, you're talking about $600 over the course of a year just in probation fees because you couldn't afford to pay your $200 jaywalking ticket. Uh, and, And the probation office, now in my town, and I know it doesn't work this way everywhere, But in in the town that I live in, the probation office is not run by the county, the city, or the state. It's a private organization that's contracted with the state of Georgia. Well, the governor of the state of Georgia owns the probation company. Hmm. Think about it. Yeah. So follow the trail there. So you've got people who are on probation for a $200 speeding ticket. The minute they missed an appointment or miss a deadline to make their $50 monthly payment, the probation office puts a warrant out for their arrest. They're picked up, and they're thrown in jail over failure to pay the probation office fee over a $200 speeding ticket that they got. Six and months. another hundred and some odd dollars on a court cost. Yeah, Guess what? Yeah, court they, cost. The officers, yep. the officers don't tell you this. With some speeding tickets, you can pay it before your court date. You don't even have to show up and pay your court fine. And I tell you right. what, Uncle Lou, you just lobbed a fastball right down the middle, and I'm on about. I want to thank you for that because I'm going to send it about 435 feet to left center because there's another little fickle, vague law trying to be passed. I don't know if any of you have heard of this, but it's called a distracted driving law. Distracted dri- – think about it for a moment. A distracted driving law. That could be something as simple as not having your hands at 10 and 2 and staring dead ahead at the road. I myself just got a ticket for this. 
and had to go to court yesterday. Well, you know what? I pled not guilty. I'm going to take it to trial because it was two state troopers on one on the right side of the road with their lights on doing what they're supposed to do at a traffic stop. It was dark. Well, I'm slowing down. You see blue lights automatically. What's the first thing we do? Slow down. Tense up. We want to know what's going on. Rubbernecking is the worst thing you can do while driving. You see the blue lights. Get, continue doing what you're doing. Quit being nosy. You're going to cause an accident for someone else or yourself. But I'm charged with reckless driving because I am merging into the left lane. There's no lights on what I could not see at this time as being another state trooper. Well, I'm doing 10 miles an hour. 10 miles an hour. I do have, I am talking on my phone. It is on speaker and I do not have it held up to my head. I'm driving by what I did not know was an additional state trooper. And I hear someone yell, are you on your cell phone? I'm like, yes, I am. I know at this time in the state of Alabama, I'm the only people who have no rights where it is illegal to talk on your cell phone, text on your cell phone, even use a Bluetooth headset with your cell phone. Teenagers, male and female, 16 and 17 years old. And bus drivers. This law is so vague, they have opened... For example, a state trooper was following a man for two miles while he was eating and driving. How many of us Americans eat your breakfast on the way to work? Are you aware that you're committing a crime now for eating? Think about it. Yeah, this is insane. Uh, This is insane. Now, of course, the the reason police are fighting for this, the reasons are obvious. The Fourth Amendment to the Constitution protects you against illegal search and seizures. That's where this whole thing comes from, where you probably heard the cops can't pull you over for no reason. Well, that's based on Fourth Amendment law uh, yep. and, and court cases that have been fought throughout the years. So the police have to have a reason to pull you over. Now, the police are always, constantly, and forever looking for ways through, around, or over the Fourth Amendment. Um, the, the, probably the most... Um, famous example of this recently is stop and frisk in New York City. If you're unfamiliar with this, basically what this meant was you didn't have to be doing anything at all. If you were if you were walking down the road, a police officer had every right to walk up to you, stop you, and pat you down. They didn't have to suspect you of a crime, um, nothing. They, they could just single you out at random for no reason and stop and pat you down. It was called stop and frisk. Now, this got overturned through lawsuits. But this just gives you an example. This is what the police are constantly looking for, another way, another reason to pull you over. And that's, all, that's, what, that, that's what the root of this distracted driving law is. The, the distracted driving law did not come about because a bunch of people were getting killed by people eating Big Macs while driving their car. That, that's not like what people happened. That. People have been – drive throughs have been around for 50 years. And people have been eating in their car for that same amount of time. This is another way for the police to be able to pull people over at random um, for no reason. You know, we've all all been pulled over at 1 or 2 in the morning before. And when you ask the cop, why did you pull me over? And they say, well, you you crossed the center line or you were swerving. Well, you you already know the only reason they pulled you over is because it's 2 in the morning. You know, and they're trying to get you for DUI, which you shouldn't be drinking and driving. That's one of the worst things you can do. But the, the the point is, the police are always looking for for a way around that Fourth Amendment. Um, they'll lie to you, uh, which is another thing I think is wrong, but it's been upheld by the Supreme Court. The police can lie to you. In other words, when you get pulled over and, you know, they tell you to get out of the car and um, – or, or they tell you, roll your window all the way down, or they tell you, uh, we're going to search your car, and you say, well, do I have to let you? And they say, yes, you have to let me. Well, no, you no. don't have to no. let them. But they're allowed to tell you that, yes, you have to let them. And, you know, unfortunately, your average citizen gets, you know, really, really nervous anytime there's any police interaction. Um, a lot of people don't know their rights and laws like they should. Um, and, and so the police are able to get away with this kind of thing, you know, way too often. But so that's the origin of this whole distracted driving law thing. Basically, what this means is the police can now pull over any car they want for any reason at all under the distracted driving 
ordinance. Yep. Which is just ridiculous. And, and and when it goes to court and the cops or the police have to prove the reasoning behind the initial stop, the officer can just say the driver appeared distracted. You know, this is this is another one of those things that can't be life. proved. Like like I fear for my life. That's why I shot him. These things can't be proved. Um, so basically, a cop can pull anybody over for any reason now under that distracted driving ordinance, uh, and, and it's just another way uh, for me to get you pulled over. You know, show me your papers. Uh, you know, thank you for passing through this checkpoint. Show me your papers, please. Uh, you know, it's just ridiculous. And one of the things I want to let the listeners know is that, yes, do your research. Know what you can and can't do. A lot of people think they'll go to their court hearing, they'll go to district court. Well, guess what? There's district court and there's circuit court. They don't want you to appeal at district court and go to circuit court because when you go to circuit court and if you win, laws get changed, people. Laws get changed at circuit court. I just found that out yesterday. Yeah, I mean, un- unfortunately, the majority of uh, of the U.S. population is just not as informed, aware and or those informed are the ones that are as, as they should be so much. when it comes to these things now. And, of course, you know, you have the argument on the other side that says, well, if you don't have anything to hide, what's the problem? Well, it's a huge problem, a, a huge problem. And and this is this, this would be sort of getting off the topic, but it's sort of along the same lines. But uh, if you want to take it a step further from local police up to a federal level, you know, you, you've got the NSA, the CIA, the FBI spying on American citizens with no warrant, no every court day. approval, uh, nothing. Day. They're just listening to every. They're listening to they're listening to this right now. They're reading every email you send. They're reading every picture message and text message you send. They're reading your Snapchat. They're logged into your Instagram account. Uh, I mean, how many and, people download a, an app from Google Play? How many of how many of you listeners actually read what's your accessibility that you're giving these apps? You're giving these companies. Did you know that the whole thing about the Facebook Messenger? That is true. If you look at your phone every now and then and you see a little eye emblem pop up at the top where it gives you your notifications like you have a Facebook notification, if you see a little eye pop up, guess what? Smile. You're being watched. You're giving them access to turn your camera on at any time and watch you. Turn your mic on and listen to you. They could be watching me right now because I'm talking about it. Smile. Hey, how are you doing? No, you're right. Yeah, it's it's true. I mean, people people hear this kind of talk and they and they think, you know, that that we're crazy. Um, you know that we're paranoid and, and all these sorts of things. And to be You've honest, you, be that, that may be true to a certain extent. I, I am a little bit crazy and, and I am a little bit paranoid. But but the, my paranoia is based in reality. Um, you know the 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 bottom line is that the United States government and and, and by extension your local police department know more about you than you know about yourself. They can. You know, your cell phone tells them everywhere you've been, ever, ever. Uh, They can track it. And until recently, within the last couple of months, the police could take your cell phone without a warrant. It wasn't it, it wasn't considered uh, protected property. Now that 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 has recently changed thanks to a Supreme yeah. Court decision. The police can no longer go through your cell phone without a warrant. Now they're still going to ask you for your phone. They're going to make you, you feel ask, like and, that. and if you say, "Well, do I have to show it to you?" They're going to say, "Yes, you have to show it to me." Uh, no, you don't. Um, and uh, I. It's, it's slipping my mind right now, but I, I think it was Thomas Jefferson that said, "If you and I'm going to get, I'm going to screw this quote completely up, but if you're basically, if you're willing to give up your personal liberties for a little bit of freedom, you deserve neither, and you end up with neither." My thing you is, you have to protect your personal liberties, people. The, the argument, I don't have anything to hide. It is a terrible, terrible mindset to have. It's terrible because I, I promise you, the government will take every inch that you give them, every inch. If they could have cameras in everybody's home, they would. They would do it in a heartbeat. 
If they could take your guns away, they would. They would do it in a heartbeat. They've tried. And I always told people, well, they're trying to take away the Second Amendment. Well, that caused an uproar. Well, let me, it's going to cause an uproar. There's, there's going to be another civil war, except it's just going to be militarized, militarization, police forces against civilians. Well, guess what? There's more civilians. We may not be as well-equipped, but guess what? Everybody that owns a gun normally will have ammunition and knows how to pull the damn trigger. Yeah. There, there's going to be an uprising, and there's... And this is, I can go on a rant right now, and I could probably go for a straight hour. And since I know how to talk, I know how to communicate, and I'm very good with my verbiage, I'm sure people would continue to listen to me speak. But the, the, the thing about it is, know your rights. Do not complain. Do not gripe. Do not argue for something you're not willing to fight for yourself. Your opinions will fall on deaf ears and blind eyes until you're willing to fight for something. If you're not willing to fight for it, are you really going to miss it after it's gone? The phrase, time heals all wounds. Yeah, we've all heard it all, out, all throughout our lives. But guess what? Scars are reminders of our suffering, and they make the bearer that much more resolved, never to be wounded again. So as time moves along, we get lost in distractions, act out in frustration, give in to anger. While all the while, we plot and we plan as we wait to grow stronger. And before we know it, the time moves along. We become healed as the same states. But at that time, we were ready to begin anew. But here's one thing. When a man or a woman is willing to change their self, do not continue to remind them of who they were. Give them praise for who they're going to be. I think I missed my calling. I think I was supposed to help people at a time, become a therapist, because I'm one hell of a listener as well. <laughs> Men, you need to realize, this is going off topic a little bit. Men, you need to realize, if you engage your significant other in a conversation every now and then, showed them some appreciation, and listened not just to respond, but to hear them, do you realize how much more you would get out of a relationship? Even physically. You don't have to, oh, damn, more. Gosh, she's going to talk some more. Listen to her. Relationships are not hard. Life is not hard. People make them hard because they're lazy. And that is my opinion. And I am me. If you don't like me, hang up. Wait for it. Did we lose anybody there, Uncle Lou? <laughs> it, it, no. Uh. <laughs> no, we didn't. All excellent points, sir. All excellent points. I can't argue with anything that you said. Um, you know, the, the, the bottom line is, uh, I, I'm going to go right back to what I said in the beginning. I, I realize that most police are, are really good people. And, you know, it, it's, most police officers don't leave their house in the morning with the intention of trampling people's civil rights uh, or the intention of killing an unarmed person that day. You know, that's that's not what I think. Um, but here's the bottom line, though. Here's the bottom line on it. They have a quota just like a damn car salesman. You notice how right. many more state troopers, how many more sheriffs, how deputies, how many more city cops are out towards the end of the month? Well, gee, that guy, that officer may have to work more because he hadn't written enough speeding tickets. Oh, let me take advantage of this distracted driving new law, and let me see if I can scoot some under the rug. Because our c civilians as a society don't know their own rights and want to complain about it. But when they have the opportunity to stand up, even if it's a public defender, guess what? A public defender doesn't want to be a public defender all their life. They may want to have their own practice. They want to win some cases, too. They don't always just go shake the hand of the ADA, the assistant district attorney, because you, you actually know they talk, they laugh before court. If, you, if you've ever had a speaking ticket, you'll see them up there before court starts. They're laughing. They're talking about their day. Guess what? They're not the one that's about to have to stand in front of a judge. You are. Know your rights. Know your rights. And that's just the bottom line. 
until you know your rights, until you know what you are actually capable of doing, or, or just as an example, if you don't know anything about a topic, are you willing to sit and get into a debate with me about anything? No. Because I come fully loaded and with extra clips in every debate I get into. I will crush you. But I'll also tell you why I did it and use that same verbiage to lift you back up. And so, so you don't make the same mistake again. Because the definition of insanity is what, Uncle Lou? Doing the same thing over again and expecting a different result. I think a hell of a lot more people need to get a damn psych evaluation before they get their driver's license. At certain stages through their life, it needs to come with a psych evaluation. Jameis Winston, damn sure needed a psych evaluation before going oh. to the NFL draft. Mm. Sorry, I, I went there. Sorry. Once I get started, I can't stop. It's like when I write. I'm, it's like my the, the blood from my passion is going through my body into my pen, bleeding onto the paper. Oh. Yep, uh, yep. So again, uh, the number to call and, and, and argue with Spriggs is 855 403 9071. Right now, he I'm has like, some strong opinions. He has some strong opinions. So uh, if you're listening uh, and you have something you need to let him know or you disagree with him, or uh, whatever the case may be, 855 403 9071. I'm on a roll right now. Somebody, somebody, give me something. Even if you agree with me, strike up a conversation. I'll teach you how. If you don't all, know. Uh, all right. I, I, w- I will say this though. Uh, y'all were talking about you know the new uh, distraction rule and whatnot. I do know out in uh, Connecticut, where I'm originally from, uh, they do have a gun where they can put it on uh, on your license plate, and they can tell if you have a parking ticket, if you have a speeding ticket, if you uh, been Thank arrested you, if for anything. Is up to date. Exactly. Yeah, they have they have that here. They have the, they have license plate readers. They're they're called that. There are many cameras that go on the front of the police cars, and they'll ride through the Target parking lot here, scanning every license plate in the parking lot. And as soon as they come across one that's expired or no insurance or uh, uh, you know has an unpaid ticket or whatever, they'll park and just wait for you to come out of Target, and 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 they got you. Uh, they can do it riding down the road too. They'll stop behind you at a red light. They hit a button and. Then, camera automatically scans your license plate and runs all your information and guess what people these officers doing this are probably being made to do this because one their quota's not up they have to answer to somebody as well they don't do you want to piss your boss off no you want to keep your job so you're going to do what they tell you to keep your job but keep providing food for your family a roof over their head people need to realize like i mentioned earlier Life is not hard. We complain, oh, God, today is going to be so hard. Well, guess what? You woke up today. Every day you wake up vertical, be blessed. There's many people that don't. Yeah, things could always be worse, that's for sure. And you're right. Uh, and this gets back to my to, to the point I've made a couple of times about not all cops being bad people. But you have to understand, just like with any job, you know, if your boss tells you to do something, you, you pretty much have two choices, do it or, or look for another line of work. So, you know, if you're a police officer and the cop tells you and 40 of your uh, coworkers that y'all need to set up on this road and do an illegal checkpoint, stop every car that comes through with the show me your papers routine, you know, you can get mad at the officer that's standing there on the side of the road conducting that job. checkpoint. You can get mad at him all you want. That's not going to change anything. The fact of the matter is... This stuff happens on a level that's way above the heads of your everyday officer. Uh, They're following orders, like you said, doing what they're told. Uh, If you work at Walmart, you might not think it's right that you have to clean the bathrooms either. But if they tell you to do it and you don't, you're going to be looking for a new job. And it's the same way with these police officers. Um, So, you know, I have more of a problem. As far as individual cops go, I have more of a problem with, with, with a cop. With you know, just having an overall attitude problem, than I do the fact that he's being made to sit on an overpass and shoot radar for speed. You know, he's doing that because he's told to. A lot of them, you know, they come up to the window with an attitude. That's 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 where I have more of an issue. Exactly. Here's one thing: How many times have police officers, and I have police officers as friends, and I tell them this to their face: oh, Why the hell are you doing this? I have no choice. It's my job. If you put me over, I'm going to give you a hard time. But here's one thing to realize. Police officers for years have been telling our youth the comment, 
Well, you may not be doing it, but you are going to be guilty by association for being with them. Well, guess what? Cops are being held to the same standard by citizens because word of mouth advertising, word of mouth spreads faster than anything you know. Good experience, you're going to tell your friends about it. You go see a good movie, you're going to talk about it. Hey, go see this movie. But if you had a bad experience, you're going to bitch, you're going to complain, you're going to do so much more, talk about it more to more people. Bad experiences spread faster than good. It goes both That's ways. True. So yeah, we get mad. We get mad for police officers for putting us in a situation and saying that well, you're guilty by association. Well, guess what? We do the same thing to them. It's a double-edged sword. And again, overthinking causes problems that are not even there. Focus. Slow down. Guess what? There's two things I'm going to say at this point, and then I've got to get to a talk because I know we're getting close to the end of the show here. Time is. One of the only things we'll never – time and land, property, are two of the things we're, we're actually getting less of every single day. Don't you want to take advantage of every single moment you can before that moment passes you by? Take advantage of a moment before it comes a, a lost memory. Dr. Seuss. Yeah, I went there. <laughs> Slow down. Enjoy life. You get to live it once. The only thing, and the hardest thing in the world to have is blind faith. The only thing the good Lord did not mess with is our free will, the ability to make a choice. Your choices define who you are in life. You're only as good as your memory you leave behind. How do you want to be remembered? Stop and think about that for a moment. How do you want to be remembered? If I die tonight and I don't wake up in the morning, guess what? I think people listening on the show, and I think people that will be downloading this and listening to it later will be that guy... Well, he's probably a smart ass. He's opinionated, but guess what? I'm me. I'm voicing my opinion, but I also know my rights. And I've got facts to back up what I'm talking about. And in the last little subject here, we were talking about corruption. We were talking about police officers. There was a man killed less than five miles away from me yesterday, found by his brother. This man's 63 years old. Lives with his 101-year-old mom. Ironically... He's also dating a, this woman who has been known to have a mental disability. I, I hate even using the word disability. My mother's disabled, and, and before I know it, before I'm gone, if I live my life to its fullest extent, I will be disabled due to gener degenerative disease. disease. But this woman also was dating a man in the mid-'80s. My topic here is one woman, two men, two dead. The man was found by his brother yesterday. Cause of death, blunt force trauma to the side of the head. He also had scratches on his arms and wounds to his arms from blunt force trauma. If a full-grown man is going to do that, unless they're completely mentally unstable, they're not going to continue to attack someone. This same woman was also dating a man that died in the mid-'80s who was very versed in vehicles, knew how to fix them. He was, and there's too many facts about this to make it true because he was working on his transmission linkage. But the truck was parked on an angle on a hill, still jacked up, and supposedly from him working underneath the vehicle on his transmission, had taken the transmission from park to neutral, the truck ran over him. Well, there's facts. Well, guess what? This happened in the mid-'80s. It was a late 70s, early 80s Ford F-150, long wheelbase, two-wheel drive. It took me one day to get that many facts about a story that happened in the mid-'80s. Think about it for a minute. Did the police chief in my small town – now, this is a small town that doesn't have a lot of problems, but guess what? They also make their own laws at times. Just put it out there. Did they have a story that would pass and people would just sweep under the rug? Well, if they would have done their job back then and did an investigation like they should have, guess what? It takes some time. It takes some effort. It's your job, people. It's what you get paid to do. Do it. And if they would have found out that woman has a mental issue, put her somewhere. You don't have to lock her up. Put her somewhere where she can get her help and keep her there. Now, because of the lack of effort, the laziness 
of something that happened in the mid 80s, 30 years ago, could have just cost another man his life, who was taking care of his 101 year old mom. Damn. Again, what is the value of human life nowadays? How lazy has society gotten? And I'm also going to blame that on technology, which will be another topic for another day. You best believe I'm also going to come fully loaded for that as well. I believe it. <laughs> well, guys, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap the show up here. So uh, I want to thank everybody who listens, uh, whether you listen live or if you're if you're listening later, uh, if you're going to download and listen later. Thanks for listening. Uh, don't be afraid to call in either. The show, uh, I promise you, the show is a lot better with callers than it is without. Nobody wants to listen to me and Spriggs talk for an hour straight. So you guys uh, give us a call next week. Let us know what's on your mind. Um, but again, thanks everybody for listening. Spriggs, thanks for uh, thanks for helping out. I thought it went great. Uh, we'll do it again me. next week. Uh, and next sure. time, guys, don't just lend me your ear. Lend me your opinion. Voice your opinions. You know, you may learn something from calling in on this show. You're not going to get attacked for calling in and giving your opinion. I'm not expecting a caller to call in and blatantly attack me for voicing my opinion. Guess what? I've got a right to freedom of speech. You never know how long we're going to have that until they, they try to start taking that away from us. Don't okay. tread on me. <laughs> don't tread right on me. People. And don't tread on me. But, yeah, so thanks for listening. Uh you can find me on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash Crazy Uncle Lou, I think it is. If you just go to YouTube and, and do a video search for Uncle Lou, you'll find me without a problem. You can find me on Twitter, uh, at Crazy Uncle Lou. You can hit me up there. Make sure you watch Uncle Lou videos every day like you're supposed to. Uh, yep, yeah, it'll make you smarter and lower your cholesterol, get you off of that Lipitor you're taking, which is killing you from the inside out. Uh, so it would be a win-win. Uh, but again, thanks for watching, uh, and until next time, good morning. Thanks, guys.